can you introduce yourself for everyone listening online? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, my my name is James Hart, and I am the lead singer uh, for the rock band Burn Halo. Your debut album comes out soon. Tell me about it. Uh, it comes out March 31st. Uh, it hits stores, and basically, uh, I've been working on this record for a couple of years now, trying to trying to get it out, and I started back in May of 2007 and just uh, had a really long road um, you know a lot of a lot of hills to climb and uh, a lot of battles to fight trying to get this thing out you know whether it was with uh, with the record label or or just you know myself really trying to you know work through all the issues and problems that have uh, have come up, have I've come across on the way uh, Dirty Little Girl was the song you chose for the first single. Why did you decide on that particular song to represent the album? Uh, I just felt that, you know, it was, it was, uh, I, I think, it was probably the funnest song on the record uh, to listen to. And aside from that, it just felt like it was going to be a memorable song lyrically with the chorus. Yo, 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 don't go. Um, with that in mind, it just made sense that, you know, listeners would be able to latch on to it, you know, quickly and, you know, hopefully off of the first listen, which is, I guess, your intent when you're going to radio, you know, you want something that's simple and easy to digest and something memorable and something people are going to remember off the first listen. And we felt that that would be the best song to, uh, to go with out the gates. Okay. Um, you had Sinister Gates make an appearance on that song. How did it come about to have him play guitar for it? Uh, basically, I, I approached I approached uh, Sin Sinister and, and Matt from Avenged uh, before I even started writing the record to see if they wanted to collaborate on a couple of songs. And um, when it came down to it, they had to go into the studio and uh, write their own record right on the same time I was doing mine. So um, Sinister called me over to his house one day, uh, a couple of days before they went into the studio, and you know he he showed me a song that he had written for me, and I ended up using it, uh, you know, writing and arranging vocals for it, and it. You know, it's one of the later tracks on the record called Añejo. So when we were recording the song in L.A., you know, I called him up and, you know, was like, hey, would you be interested in coming down and, and you know, tracking guitars on the song you wrote on? And he was all for it. And then when we were, uh, we were in the studio doing that song, we thought it might be kind of cool to have him play, you know, lead guitar on Dirty Little Girl. And at that point, we had no idea, um, you know, it was even going to be the lead single. So, you know, he was all about it. Uh, you know, we had a good little space for him in the song for him to do his thing, and, you know, it came out great. Um, the song, Saloon Song, has kind of a country-ish feel to it. The rest of the album, songs on the album are more rock. What made you want to um, include this style of music on the album? Um, basically, the, most of the songs are written on acoustic guitars, uh, believe it or not. And from there, obviously, we, we, we built them with electrics and, and all that other good stuff. Uh, that song, I think, has the most country vibe to it on the record just because of the lyrical content. It, it really paints a picture and tells a story. And it's, it's lyrically something that you'd probably hear, you know, in, in a country song. And I think that that's probably why, you know, it comes across that way the most. I also feel like, you know, the way the songs were recorded for, you know, Too Late to Tell You Now and, and even Back to the Start at some some moments have that similar, you know, vibe to it that that, uh, that Saloon song carries. Um, did you do anything different around, at this time around in the studio than you did with your previous band, eight, band 18 Visions? Yeah, everything was really different for me. Um, you know, starting with the, the songwriting process, Typically in the past, I would be handed a full music bed, uh, which included, you know, drums, bass, guitars, and lead guitars with minimal room to work with vocally. And this time around, we built the songs from the ground up, and, and I was much more a part of it, uh, you know, basically writing, you know, at least 50% of each song, if not more, uh, 
on a couple different songs. And it was just, it, it was cool to, to just build a song from the ground up and, and have it like, you know, just grow organically and, and naturally and really be able to, you know, build the progressions and, you know, focus on, you know, the lyrics and the vocals and, and build everything around that. Um, you know, in the past it was, it was, uh, in the studio as well, tracking, it was, it was much different. Um, you know, I was focused more on, on getting, you know, getting, uh, I guess you could say, uh, more of a, a vocal sound that was more, uh, I had to do with more of like my pitch and whether I was, you know, perfectly on key or off, you know, whether I was off key, this was more about the vibe and the feeling of the vocal and, and, and the emotion of the lyrics. Um, you know, we really wanted, you know, the listeners to be able to feel, you know, what I was singing. And I felt like we were able to accomplish that as well. Uh, what inspires you in your songwriting? Uh, for me, it's it's uh, it's it's everyday life, whether it's whether it's what's going on in my life or somebody else's life, and I step into somebody else's shoes and you know look at what's going on in their life and 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 try to write about it. I, I like writing about you know things that happen you know within within nature. It's just it to me it's it's easier for people to connect to as, as a listener. I know I know when I hear a song. Uh, for example, I'll take Nickelback's photograph. I hear that song, and it reminds me of growing up and, you know, going back to, you know, my old neighborhood or my old city where, you know, where I was raised. And, you know, that's just a song that I can connect to as, as well as, you know, pretty much everybody else in this world. And I think that it's, it's, it's important to write, to write songs lyrically that people can, uh, can connect to. Um... You worked with Zach Malloy on the album. Uh, what was it like working with him? Uh, it was great. You know, it was, it was obviously really, really different for me at the beginning because typically I had written songs uh, in, in a band atmosphere. Uh, this time around, it was 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 just me and him uh, on acoustic guitars, and you know, Zach's a great songwriter, and he's he's got a great grasp of you know, musical direction for the specific artist. And being in a rock band, you know, the Nixons for, for so long, you know, he's he, he comes from a rock background. It's not like he's a pop guy trying to write rock songs. He's a rock guy writing rock songs. So the collaboration was, was really, really, you know, was really great. It was an awesome experience for me. And as far as the recording process as a producer, you know, I felt like, Going with him was the right idea because he knew the songs inside and out, and you know we weren't going to pull anything away from him or you know try to add anything to him and do too much to the songs. You know we we wrote him with one thing in mind, and that was to write you know memorable hit songs. And you know I just felt that having somebody else come into the picture might kind of paint what we uh, what we had tried to do from the outset. Uh, if you could tour with anyone dead or alive, who would it be and why? If I could play with anyone dead or alive? Tour with them. Tour with, oh. Uh, wow, you know, I would honestly say, uh, I, I would honestly say it's, it would be, you know, the bands we're out with right now, Avenged Sevenfold and Buck Cherry and Papa Roach. Uh, reason being is because obviously it would be cool to, to say, you know, we want to tour with Metallica or, you know, tour with, you know, Guns N' Roses, The Beatles, or, or one of these, you know, great, you know, rock and metal bands that have been staples and been around for so long. But to be honest with you, those crowds are the hardest to win over. And I think that what we're doing right now, the bands we're out with right now, uh, is just such a perfect blend for us. And, you know, being on this tour and seeing how receptive the fans are and hearing stories about other bands that have gone out on tour, you know, with a Metallica or a Guns N' Roses, you know, those crowds are much harder to win over. And, you know, from a business standpoint, I'd, I'd, you know, much rather, you know, go out and tour and cater to the right audience. Um, what do you have in store for your fans for the remainder of 2009? Uh, just touring, 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 touring. You know, we're going to release this record and, you know, we're really excited about finally, you know, getting it out there and, in people's hands and it's not going to
back and rolling? Yeah. Okay, so where were we? Um, what do you have in store for your fans uh, for the remainder of 2009? Uh, basically just, you know, get out there and keep touring. You know, we hope to be a part of some great touring package, packages this summer and later this fall. And, you know, we're really excited to release this record here in a couple of weeks. And um, just keep building this track, Dirty Little Girl at Radio, and hopefully, you know, this, this track will last for a while at radio and you know maybe in the fall we can launch a new single and keep the ball rolling do you have any final words for your fans um just thank you for the support and you know i really hope to see you guys out at the shows and, you know keep on rocking